Greetings. Welcome to a new episode of Art Matters. I'm your host, Wayne Quackenbush, and we'll be interviewing two artists, uh, mostly local today. And the first artist we'll be talking to is Laura White Carpenter, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and thanks for coming by. Uh, we're um, recent friends and acquaintances. I yeah. met you at uh, intake at one of the Portsmouth Arts Guild shows, and you brought us some of your uh, ceramics and one of your paintings and uh, struck up a conversation, and here we are today with a lot of things to talk about. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> of course. So you want to talk a little bit about your journey, about how uh, uh, you got to where you are today? Sure. Uh, well, I started out as a painter, um, so I showed and exhibited in the Boston area for about a decade. And then I took a class in ceramic tile making, and I really discovered the allure of clay. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there I went to, I went quickly from 2D to 3D in clay. Uh, and now I consider myself a, primarily a sculptor. Mm. By day, I'm an occupational therapist at a hospital in Rhode Island, mm -hmm. uh, and I am able to work with patients by um, introducing art into their lives. And we were talking briefly about that. Are you able to incorporate uh, the clay and the tactile nature of that in your, in your work? Yes, uh, patients really enjoy working with clay. It's a new material for a lot of them, and it just, uh, it, it, the tactile sensation is just wonderful. Well, it's very primal. It's, it's, uh, it's really something to go in and get your hands dirty. Absolutely. And, uh, and turn something that was a blob of nothing into something else. Yes. And um, you also have this opportunity of um, accessing an archive of, what did you say, 170 years of artwork? It's 175 years that the hospital has been open. Wow. And uh, they have artwork from all along. Uh, there's a wonderful archive, and we also are uh, displaying it in a timeline within the halls of the hospital. And there's a revolving community artist gallery as well, where we invite uh, patients, staff, as well as community artists to display their artwork. Now is this open to the public? Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. All right. um, when public is allowed in the building, okay. unfortunately, there's still some COVID restrictions oh, right, in that way. Yeah. But it's in uh, an accessible area for any visitor. Okay. Uh, and patients and staff do pass by it every day. And um, you also uh, seem to have been s somewhat of a world traveler. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you were talking about your adventures in the uh, Peace Corps and how that might have changed your perspective yes, on absolutely. life. I, uh, so I've lived on four continents uh, and I lived in Ghana for the longest, uh, aside from North America, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was in the Peace Corps in Ghana as a forestry volunteer. And before then, I was incredibly shy. Uh, but that experience really got me out of my shell. Um, and I really also got my love of reusing materials. So a lot of the pieces I'm going to show have uh, incorporated uh, pieces I've found. Um, and also uh, reusing in creative ways. So in that culture, uh, nothing is wasted. So. Right. So no running water and no electricity <laughs> and all of that good stuff. It's and pretty hot too. Limited, <laughs> limited uh, yeah, limited resources. Yes. And um, so we, I, I wanted you to talk about living in Ghana because you have a recurring shape that you use for some of your ceramic pieces. Yes. And you can start by talking about uh, that what I described as a drop, but you said specifically it's a raindrop. Yes. So I started the raindrop project a few years ago. Uh, all, almost everything you're seeing here is hand built with the coil method, which has been used 
for tens of thousands of years. Um, if you want to explain that briefly, how? Sure. Uh, I think we've all done it, uh, okay. where you roll clay in a snake, basically, right. stack them on top of each other, and then I smooth the sides. Right. Uh, it so doesn't if use you wanted to bring a piece out and then sure. kind of put it so that the camera yes. can get a look at it? So uh, <coughs> my uh, project is using the raindrop shape, and I'm exploring different surface techniques uh, through the through the ages. Um, this one is using uh, scraffito where I have carved out areas and then I inlaid it with an underglaze. Um, there's so you put the glaze on and then you wipe off the surface part of it? Yes. Okay. The underglaze and then uh, cover it with the uh, clear. Right. So you cover it with the clear after you fire it first? Yes. There's two firings. Yes. Right. There's uh, first firing for the underglaze and second firing for the glaze. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe pass them over to okay. me and I can Thank you. get them out of the way. Um, so this raindrop, uh, I spend a lot of time walking on the beach in Rhode Island and I find a lot of sea glass so I actually crushed the sea glass and uh, embedded it into the clay so when it heated up to 2000 degrees uh, it came through the surface and it created some of the fissures you see here and uh, it's actually uh, there's no clear glaze on it that's actually what the glass did to it is that where the colors coming mm -hmm. from yes the, the blue and the, mm -hmm. and the blood color yes. is all from sea glass yes you can turn a little bit so people oh, can absolutely. see the other side so I love, I love the textures that come out and it's completely uncontrollable. I really don't know what you relinquish control. Well, that's half the beauty of it. You're inviting, yeah. uh, you're inviting the chaos. Right, exactly. Yeah. And obviously because of living in such an arid area, the, the raindrop has a lot of significance. Yes, I think access to clean water is a human right. It's a basic Absolutely. human right. And unfortunately, even in this country, not everyone has access to that. That's true. Um, here's one I did uh, using a rose pattern that I put onto the surface of it. So you built the coil and then you added the roses? Yes. And then uh, again, two firings for the glazes? Yes. Uh, and this is, this is porcelain clay, uh, which comes out quite clear. It's That's very finicky. Too. Yes. <laughs> yes. You got this one's a little heavier. Mm -hmm. um, here's another one with sea glass embedded in it. And again, I didn't use the glaze. Uh, the sea glass, uh, glaze means glass. Yes. Uh, so the glass became the, the glaze. So I didn't use a commercial glaze. Well, it's kind of funny because glass comes from sand and then mm -hmm. you've turned it back into sand and then you embed it in the clay and then it melts. And it's, uh, there's a whole, um, Meta metamorphosis happening. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And again, it's my, my love of found object and reusing what I find. And the pitting, is that from the, how, the, how the glaze came out? The, the, um, yes, uh, there must have been, uh, yes, there was some under the surface in it. It had nowhere else to go but out. So here's one. Um, I think that these look like rock candy. Okay. <laughs> Other people have said barnacles, so I think oh, I I've was, titled this I barnacle <laughs> rock, rock candy. I was, I was thinking teeth myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a thing called tryptophobia. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully none of the that, viewers that. That was, that was just... Uh, um, the, I know you have other pieces where you have like masses of things and it's kind of, um, um, I could see it be, da be daunting to some people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>
Well, uh, but it does it have it does have that kind of barnacle feeling that that uh, um, and how could you escape that because everything comes from the ocean, right? Right. Yes. But it looks like you built them as uh, um, triangles and then folded them. Is that yes. Right? Yeah. And, it was, and then, uh, it's and like then, a fortune cookie shape. Yeah, that's, yeah. E that's exactly right. And then they, mm -hmm. they attach with uh, mm -hmm. just uh, the moisture from the clay, right? Uh, this one I attached later on. Most of them are from the moisture, but I, I had to use a, uh, a, a construction adhesive. To oh, put those okay. On. All right, interesting. And then did you attach them and then glaze them and then fire it again? I, I, I first carved this out used under glaze, used a, a clear glaze on top. So that's the second firing. Mm -hmm. And then I made these separately in the same way and mm -hmm. then attached them later on. Oh, okay. But that you fired them first and then attached them? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're learning all your tricks. <laughs> um, do you need... No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start shifting stuff back here. So I started using, uh, so to make this, this is not coiled, it, what it is is I rolled out a slab of clay and then cut strips of it and then attached them back together. So it's disassembled and reassembled sheet of clay. Okay, so uh, you, you know you could have used an extruder from like an old Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> I like the manual aspect of it, no, of and that also means that each one is uh, slightly different width. They're, yeah, they're not they're not uniform yeah. at all. You can see the different sizes. Do you have a feeling it's just not going to come together as it's building up, or are you oh, confident? Oh, you're only you're only seeing the successes. Oh, on this show. <laughs> all right. So I'm I'm kind of. <laughs> getting into the mindset here. <laughs> I could see, yeah. see something falling apart There's very easily. There's a lot easily. of uh, failures, yeah. especially using porcelain. But that's unique. Thank you. Um, and I'm not sure if this can uh, be seen. I think that, I think that uh, we can get a view of it from uh, Andrew yeah. here. Uh, this is a variation. I call this a cocoon. Um, I really wanted to g give it more, much more soft edges as compared to the other one, kind of make you feel like it's enveloped. Now we're actually getting down to our last minute, so if you want to talk about the metal pieces quickly, okay. we can wrap things up. Okay. Um, I also do metal sculpture. I can. I learned how to weld at the steel yard, uh, and all, everything you're seeing here in this tea set is from the beach, and I just manipulated it uh, through using an oxycellin torch and then MIG welder to make it a tea set. Yeah, and uh, found objects and uh, welded together and. You got your spoon <laughs> made out of a spike. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and I do that. I don't know what it is. Uh, you'd never be able to drink out of it, but <laughs> it looks nice. Well, I really want to thank you so much. This time went by so quickly. <laughs> um, and thank you for bringing your things here and sharing them with us. You're welcome. Thank you for the invitation. It's been of a course. pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks again. Thank you. We're here with our next guest, a young woman I've known for a number of years, the very mysterious at the moment, Nicole Marvelous. Nicole, uh, I think we first met at the Portsmouth Arts Guild when your then very young daughter was featured in the newspaper for participating in the uh, emerging artists uh, show there and uh, her artwork kind of captivated one of the reporters and you were you you uh, had a taste of celebrity yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so you want to talk a little bit about your journey and your interest in art and and uh, 
how, how have things gone for you? Yes, so I've always been interested in art. Ever since I was a kid, I just, I just never stopped making art. I saw an opportunity to participate and become a member at the Portsmouth Arts Guild, and I signed up. And uh, actually, I think we might have met before that for like free comic book day at oh, the comic yes. book store. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's always uh, an interest in uh, getting some literature out to the youngsters to get them their imaginations uh, stimulated and get them into reading and storytelling. And uh, I know you do a lot of work with young people now too, right? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, I know that you uh, have been working with my former and continuing intern, Michael. Yeah, he's great. Who's uh, actually directing the show right now. And uh, he's involved with the Fab Lab, right? Yeah, so the Fab Lab is a nonprofit mm -hmm. organization that I partner with to do a lot of events in the community for residents in the area. So you're also very involved with the resonance of what they call the North End in yes. uh, Newport, which yes. is that area, to my understanding, which is by the Newport Bridge and, and um, Connell Highway and, and uh, up the hill and all of that. Um, yeah. Have, have you been involved with um, the planning for the different scenarios that could happen down there with the construction? Or are you more, in, I'm sorry, were you more involved with the housing aspect? So both. I'm, okay. I'm involved with a lot of working groups and I do some work with the uh, Health Equity Zone, which is involved with getting residents engaged and active in local politics and, and just things that are happening within the community. So yeah, I'm very, very involved with so that. So you're, you're active in giving people or getting people to use their voices. Yeah. And you know, having a say in what goes on in their own community. Yep, I think it's extremely important. <coughs> and I, I focus a lot on not just the residents, but the younger generation so mm -hmm. that they can know that there's power within your voice. This is your community and you're, you're inheriting what we're doing right now. Right, and so you don't grow up hopeless. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And, yeah. and working with young kids and, and again, stimulating their imaginations and getting them involved with each other. On a social basis, I know that uh, Fab Lab is involved with uh, a lot of different creative things. I know you're doing, um, you were shooting documentary films. Yeah. So you're doing like AV stuff. Working and, with uh, Newport Film. Yep. And they're kind of showing people in the area how to do small documentaries. Mm -hmm. And everyone who's involved with that, myself included, just wants to highlight the voices of, of people locally. Yeah. And um, also um, the, the visual arts in other ways, too. Um, I know that they have all sorts of equipment. Um, is that, are they still based in the Florence Gray Center? Or Fab Lab? Fab yeah. Lab, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're on the first floor there, yeah. the Florence Gray Community Center. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And of course, there is connections there because that's where the med school where I have worked with several interns as well yep. uh, and yet you still find time to raise up your, <laughs> your, your, your daughter yes and, yep. and uh, make your own artwork yeah and um, oh so you have you you wear lots of different hats uh, and you literally have, and uh, figuratively you have yep. your, your fingers in different uh, applications and you're doing all sorts of different things so uh, is the spo are the spoken word events you're doing is that through the fab lab or is that uh, n the uh, other the Newport art uh, house because that's a whole other story right right yeah so Newport art house is a nonprofit as well I'm the I'm the boss mm -hmm. at Newport art house and again we're partnering with fab Newport and we are giving space to young artists in the area every week and we you know we have dinner we encourage creative collaboration we make art we explore 
community opportunities for art making and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you still um, doing the live shows? Because that was a thing in the past regime that had uh, yeah. music music events. I yeah. was uh, doing some Instagram live uh, events every every single week to kind of keep the community engaged in art making during COVID because mm -hmm. everything was shut down, and I just I felt like it was important to keep that connection and and have space for people to make art. Yeah. Together, together, but virtually. Yeah, well, you know that we've had uh, events where uh, people have gathered together in the same room and there's a certain, I'll simplify it and call it a magic involved when you're creating with other people at the same time. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of, uh, it ladders up and, and, and builds on, uh, onto each person's uh, abilities, I think. I think so too, yeah. And. Human beings are social creatures, and they kind of thrive when, when uh, they're in a group. So to me, it's like the best thing. Um, it's kind of like uh, sports for people who are not into sports. <laughs> 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 or into sports or other things, too. Mm -hmm. So you cover the visual arts and the, and the spoken word, because storytelling in all of its forms is very important, like the filmmaking and the, and the drawing and the painting and the uh, we need to uh, start looking at your artwork I'm told oh yeah all right <laughs> so um, here's a piece of artwork can you see it <laughs> yeah you got to show it to uh, Andrew and talk a little about about what you're trying to do and well this this particular piece I made in 2017 and and I absolutely love it it was my first entry into the spring bowl gallery when they had an open call for entries and I felt that it was important because there's very little to no representation of people of color within the art making spaces here in Newport so yes indeed yeah so I was super proud to exhibit this particular piece and have them hang it like right there as soon as you go into the gallery that was pretty dope mm-hmm um, I've been doing a lot of watercolor paintings. Hold it up vertically. Can you see it? Yep. With some embellishments on it. And I do a lot of this work. Is that on paper? Or yeah, on so this is, this is a mixed media paper frame that you can, oh, you can right. hold okay. it yep. to be a frame. Um, but yeah. keep, keep holding it up so, so the audience can see can it. See? Get the shine in there. Yep, you know, like a little uh, glitter happening there. Yes, lots yep, of glitter yep, yep. in my work. Here, I'll show you this one that I absolutely love. Everyone knows who that is. That's uh, yep. our wonderful son Goku. Yep, that's He's right. The the uh, anime character that is more than loosely based on Superman. Pretty much, actually. <laughs> Keen observation Keen there. People from. A uh, visitor from another planet yes. comes to Earth and he has all sorts of strange powers and a exactly. tail. Yeah, and a tail. But we did lose his tail later, didn't yes. we? Yes, yes. For and those all of, of his, you that don't know. His, uh, most of the characters either are either named after underwear or, or um, <laughs> vegetables. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> underwear and vegetables. Love it. Uh, this illustration is um, made in ink. I try to do a monthly challenge, so this is part of Mermaid, where you just do a mermaid, you know, pretty much you every a, day. You drew a mermaid every day? Uh, not every single day. Yeah. Most days of the week I did. And the idea behind this is so that, like, I can take all of these illustrations that I made and make a coloring book at the end, which is why Absolutely. they're in black and white. So yep. I just just love that idea so I'm probably gonna do that absolutely um, this is this is this is a drawing that I absolutely love as part of a separate challenge okay. I'm part of a several discord servers and this was one of the challenges to do some horror themed art and that's what what came to my mind so it's a little uh, Silent Hill franchise little there. Silent Hill fan art there which I absolutely love uh, yeah and and these are these are watercolor paintings that I've done with some little bits of shiny paint. I don't know if you can see it or not, but 
glittery paint in there. I've been experimenting with gouache, which is an opaque watercolor, and I really love how it looks. And where did you get that hot pink from? This hot pink is, um, I think it's Arteza gouache. Uh -huh. And I bought like the biggest set that they have. And it happened to have hot pink, and I said I had to make something with this. So, <laughs> so I did. And then, um, you know how when you go to the craft store and you can get you can get like the blank canvases, a three pack where it says like live, laugh, love, oh or whatever. God, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. I was like, no, we're not doing that. So, yep, yep. I just took one of those and thought it would make a nice orientation for a mermaid. And this also has some glittery paint on it. And embellishments really into the glitter. The pearls and the glitter and um, the, the. Do you have one of those things where you put rhinestones on stuff when you oh, were Oh, the kid? bedazzler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what that reminds me of. <laughs> See, no, no, but no bedazzler, but I do embellish things with uh, some super glue. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. So you're you're way into uh, mermaids and way into uh, mermaids way into primarily um, black women as my uh, primary focus. Right, so I mean it's, it's kind of a, a feat of strength to have um, a black uh, queen or princess in the spring ball gallery. Yeah. And right there in the front. Yeah. So I mean just by being in the room you're, you're, you're making a statement. Making a statement, and that's what, exactly what I wanted to do. It was an open call to any artist, and I said, well, they're taking everything that people are submitting. Yeah, so this absolutely. is what I'm going to submit. Non-juried, and, and uh, everything goes, and, and as well it should. I mean, mm -hmm. I've always been a, a great believer that everyone has a voice and should be allowed to use it, uh, except for you know, in certain circumstances. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because we have freedom of speech doesn't always mean right. you need to talk. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because you, you learn that lesson pretty quickly. Yeah, but I was super proud to be a part of that exhibition, so. Yep. So what are, so you've got Newport Film, you've got Newport Art House, you've got Fab Lab. Um, uh, what do you think the next step is? Well, because you're you're kind of taking over the world. Yeah, that's the plan, Pinky. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I've partnered with Newport Art Museum, another nonprofit. So primarily all the nonprofits in the area, uh -huh. most most of them. Um, the plan is just to continue to encourage community art making, and encourage people to just to make to make art. Um, if I may, real quick, I just want to share another piece that I. I, I like to go to different places and um, kind of paint what I what I see. Oh, there you go. So, so there's, want, there's the menu. Yeah, I want people to just take every opportunity to make art. Okay, well I think that's a good place for us to wrap it up. I want to thank you for coming down. Thank it you is for marvelous. Me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thanks for being on the show. And that wraps it up for another episode of Art Matters, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for coming by.